Alrighty, <laughs> yo, what is up, knights? It's just Rick here, back with another recap video, guys. Uh, the last time we did a recap video, guys, was on the f uh, winter update video that we had, uh, 2016 winter update, I think it was. It was about seven months ago, so, yeah, a little more than seven months ago is when we got the news on uh, the winter update. Now it's the 2017 KDNF summer update, and just to kind of give a recap of how these goes, is going to be a really long, rambly video about me explaining what happened in this summer update, but the, the, the summer and winter updates are basically... Uh, well, you have one every year, uh, so basically two events, big events uh, for KDNF, and of course that means DFOG later on in the future, but KDNF getting big updates, okay? Obviously the game itself is going to have minor updates, you know, patches here, there, buffs here, there, small things, but the big things are what we get here on these updates. So the KDNF Summer Update brought a lot of stuff here. Uh, here's kind of like a forecast, at least in KDNF, of when these things are going to be coming out. Uh, and we're going to be going over all of them. Now, <laughs> a lot of you guys already know what's in this update. In fact, if you saw the winter update, then you guys already know uh, what was kind of the teaser to what we were getting in summer. And they did deliver. And it's going to be a lot of hypeness, especially in my part. Because I'll be honest with you guys, I've been waiting these since the winter update. I thought we were going to get these the winter update. Uh, and then we finally get them the summer update. I'm just excited. And, uh, you know, this being said... Uh, the stuff that was in the winter update video, if you guys check that out, all of that content is almost, all of it is in our version of the game. Uh, everything that was revealed at that time, which was brand new at the time for the winter update, we just now got it about six or seven months later. So it's almost been exactly seven months or so, six or seven months since we got the reveal of the female priest and female priest came out last week or at least a couple weeks ago. So that's kind of the time frame. It's about six months wait time. That's when you might start seeing some of this content. So just kind of let you guys know as we jump into it again, shout out to Jay on DFO Nexus who always gives us great translations every patch, not just the big summer updates, but he does it for every even small patches. He does it. So I have a lot of different tabs pulled up and we'll be going over them but uh there are, is the test server in korea so if you guys are somehow playing the korean version of the game it may be a reality for you to go ahead and try some of this stuff out on the test servers of the game but again like dfog like i said we're probably going to get this six or seven months down the line but still it's just a great exercise to get hype over but guys i'm going to skip over the july 20th update which is going to be the most recent stuff because well obvious reasons uh as you'll see later on but instead i'm going to go over a lot of the like systems that are uh, aside from that. First and foremost, guys, we got an epic crafting system now. We already have an epic crafting system in the game right now. Uh, and that's by using the epic dictionary, of course. But now they're going to have a different system. I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you, which is the same video. So I'll go, I'll go ahead and put this clip just higher definition. So there you can kind of see we got like a blood moon. What the heck is that all about? That's so awesome. Hmm. Now you can kind of see what this is. Seems like the launchers here are getting some kind of buff that they can use on their weapons here. And it's kind of buffing up their skills. You can tell this is not the normal color of the laser. It's usually blue. Now it's like orange, like yellow. What's going on here? Napalm is massive! Shooter, Ozzel. Wow. And then finally, this one's the most hype about th that I've seen so far. Put the toner down. Look at your shadow clones, man. That's not normal. Twister. Oh, Hurricane, man. Amazing. All right. So, uh, basically, guys, that was that one. And, uh, what this is, is an epic crafting system. It is actually, you're crafting, they haven't really gone into details as to what you have to do to get these. Uh, and if you didn't understand the video, it was basically, there are specific epics of which grant your character specific, unique effects. Uh, 
I kind of described them as they're like chronicle epics, right? Because the chronicle gears right now are the ones that give you unique effects to your skills and such like that. These ones have like very, very unique effects. Like for instance, the big blood moon on the katana that was shown uh, showcased in the start of the video. That big blood moon actually gives you a buff while it's active. And it looks awesome. It's in the background and everything. So it looks amazing. Uh, on top of that, you also have, you know, where you pick up this hand cannon. When you pick up these like little buffs on the ground, you buff up your class like tremendously in your skills and obviously the totem on the monk come on man the extra effects of the shadow clone is just amazing it makes epic so much more interesting this is really one of the updates that i'm like very excited about we got epics that are like chronicles that are very unique you're not going to sit there and only get damage buffs and just get higher damage numbers we're actually getting different effects upgraded effects or unique effects that maybe you know uh, they're almost certainly going to be stronger than all of the 90 epics in the game they are going to be level 90 and they're just going to have really unique effects i'm really looking forward to it in fact the stats I believe some of the stats are actually right here. You can see, like, for instance, the totem, right? Mantu's Legacy is what it's called. And here are the stats on it. It gives you 35 all elemental damage, uh, plus 2 on Shadow Clone, so you don't even need to swap it. Gives you all of the buffs, uh, or at least it changes the effects of these skills right here. This is the blue kind of effect that we saw on it. I don't know if it actually buffed it up, but it made it look cooler at least. And then hit right here, 40% additional. This is massive this is straight up the best totem in the game hands down no doubt about it 40 percent additional and 35 elemental damage like just right off the bat uh masa Mune, i think it is is a 90 katana this is going to be better than that i would assume 44 percent is better than all and 10 uh strength and int this is going to be sick for pretty much everybody that uses katana or can use katana i mean these are the best 90s. They're better than what exists right now, and they're very unique. You can see right here, this buffs up, uh, gives you a buff that changes your skills for 150 seconds, gives you all the, these extra effects on those skills. Again, I don't know if this is better or worse than what the 90 canyon is right now, but it's going to be god tier. It's going to be good. So that's talking about the epics themselves. I'm really excited about them. Trust me, because one thing I've complained a lot about is the 90 epics have been so boring. All of them. All of them. Not a single one has done anything cool. In fact, the coolest sets, epic sets in the game are 80, 85 sets. You know, like Natural Guardian, Tactical. These are like sets that are a different from the norm, whereas all 90 sets are like, here, do more damage, and then the next set that's a different, uh, you know, armor type, do more damage, do more damage, that's all that does, so uh, it's nice that you have some cool effects, so I'm happy about that. Now, what I'm confused about, though, and which has not been explained really, is how do you craft them? How do you craft these actual epic materials right here? You said you start collecting them at level 55, so my guess is normal dungeons are going to be dropping these materials that you need to craft these 90 epics, and then every weapon type will be included. Uh, I think there is a picture right here. Here's showcasing the stats on the weapons we were just taking a look at. These are the three that have been revealed so far, so obviously... Uh, there's a lot of other weapon types that are still yet to be seen, but from what we're seeing right now, it's even hyper than the 90 epics that exist right now, which is pretty massive. The only problem is, how do we craft them? Pretty much uh, the only thing that of the information that we have on what it's going to take to make these epics is just a clip, a very short clip of them showing them actually making it, which here, if I can just pause on the screen right here, maybe boost it up so you guys can see it. It seems like there are three different types of materials that you farm, kind of these like energies right here, epic energy, you got one right here, one right here, one right here. Um, and you can see down here at the bottom, it's like 99% completion rate or something. And you, I guess, combine them all together to finally craft your epic right there. And this is a craftable one. By the way, this is the first time I've ever seen an epic or an item in the game have a full art on it. Usually you only see the icon. This has a full art on it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but that being said, aside from this page right here, unless you guys can kind of maybe translate or give us a little tip on what the heck this page is all about, this is all we have on what it takes to craft these 90 epics. Uh, I'm noticing at the top here, we have at the top left, we have the main crafting page. As we back up a little bit, we have the main crafting page, which is this left tab right here, but then we have two other tabs, and I don't know what the translation is on that, but uh, there may be. Uh, pertinent to what the crafting material is it looks like we have like a, a low grade a mid grade and a high grade epic something you know and you need all three of them to craft an epic so my guess guys though i mean this is all we get to see on it so we got no details like where they drop what dungeons drop them uh how often you're gonna get them but my guess is guys that grinding this is not gonna be easy my guess is it's gonna take 
many, many, many months of straight grinding to try to get them. Probably untradeable, uh, like untradeable material on that character. So you got to keep playing that character. I'm just guessing at this point, but they're not going to make it easy. Let's just say that they're not going to make it easy because there's no way they'd want uh, everybody to have it. You know, you're going to start being able to collect materials at 55, but my guess is you'll be max level and some for a long time before you'll be able to craft a 90 epic weapon. Because think about it for a second. It's going to be better than almost every epic item in the game. It's going to be better than anything you can get at a TOD. It's going to be better than anything you can get at a Tower of Grief, which, by the way, we don't even have yet. It's going to be better than... I think it's almost better than a Savior just raw on its own. Uh, not the upgraded Savior. I think those still might be better, but... It's going to be good. So they're not going to make it easy to get. They never have. So it's, trust me, even crafting epics nowadays is some Hitler ass shit. This is going to be just the same. I'm not I'm not guessing anything more on that. Anyway, guys, moving along on the same kind of vein, uh, we're going to get a new dungeon econ, the strong ones. This actually is going to be hard to explain what this is because uh, we don't have the 90 legendaries. But this is basically in another dungeon that is easier or it makes it easier to farm the level 90 legendaries uh, you gotta clear uh, you gotta clear the previous dungeon to unlock it you have 1v1 battles with fierce enemies they're gonna be done uh, they're gonna make the dungeon clear count six to four we don't have these dungeons yet so you know it's gonna be hard for me to explain that materials needed to craft has been lowered so you don't need nearly as many to craft um, to craft the actual uh, 90 legendary and uh, you can change the level 90 legendary group type. I'm not even sure what that means. But basically, you know how we had Anton Normals for a long time? My guess is that afterwards they're going to make it... Like, like this dungeon makes it so that uh, this is like heroic Anton. You know, so it's just like the next grade makes it easier. And you don't have to grind as much. They've added a lot of features like this when the system has been out for a while. Like for instance, they get added uh, heroic Anton while we had normal Anton to make it easier right to make the grind easier uh so they're gonna have a system just like that for the new 90 level level 90 legendaries which we don't have yet so fact of the matter is this is going to be new stuff to make it easier but we're probably when we get finally get the 90 legendaries we're not even gonna we're not even gonna see this for a long time so that's my guess on that so the epics 90 epics crafting i'm so excited about that this is kind of whatever because we don't even have that yet but it's going to be easier so I guess we can, if you find it too hard at the start, then this is going to be made a little bit easier and you won't have to grind as much. So kind of two small updates right there. Let's go ahead and look on the 17th. This is going to be big. Character balancing. This is going to be kind of like a meta change almost. This is completely, all four of these tabs right here are meta changes. Uh, really three of them. Which which right here gets her own tab for some reason. They're going to make a witch renewal, which I don't know if that means complete overhaul or if it just means like we're going to give you a couple new skills. Like this right here says you're going to get a new broomstick spin attack, which is nice. You get another broomstick skill, which is like my build right now. Active skill deeps rework. So my guess is just her buff and buffs and passives are merged merge and rework. So she's, it's not, doesn't sound like a complete renewal. It's just kind of simplification of her class and one new skill, which is nice. Um, here, this point right here is a little vague on what they mean. They just mean balance. So, uh, we're going to make female grappler debuff easier to use. That's weird how they singled out this class out of all 50 that they're planning on doing because this tab right here says buff to all deeps classes. All deeps classes, just period. And a nerf to the or overpower classes. I guess not very specific on what they, what they even consider OP. Uh, do they mean overpowered and support? Do they mean overpowered deeps classes? Do they mean... I I'm not sure what they mean. So my guess is, honestly, guys, just expect balance patches across the board. If you feel like your character's weak, maybe you'll you'll get lumped into this, where you're going to get some buffs. Or maybe if you're, like, you know, Battle Mage. I know a lot of people talk about Battle Mage and and uh, and Tyrant and all that. You know, the female or the male uh, Stryko. You know, maybe you're going to get a nerf. So who who knows what the hell do you... It's too vague to really put any words to it. But uh, just know that female grappler is going to get easier debuffs, and which is going to get renewed. And then everybody else is going to get changed. They're working on that. It's kind of weird that they are slating it for August 17th with no details yet, honestly. But here's the big ones, guys. The first and last tabs are super, super key, okay? First, party synergy, okay? The party, they're, they're trying to change the meta with, the, with what they're saying here. They're saying that the maximum of 30% damage buffs for your party. 
So basically, they're saying you can't just double stack or triple stack your your supports anymore. You need to incorporate some deeps into your parties uh, and stop relying so heavily on the supports because they're trying to buff up the deeps classes and make it such that the supports are not as uh, valuable anymore. Because right now, if you double support one deeps, it's going to be maybe more equivalent than it's going to be more powerful than having a couple deeps. Like that's how good the supports are. Uh, they're going to clean up party synergy types. I think they're going to more distinguish physical and magic classes are going to have like more physical supports because right now the magic classes get a lot more i guess benefits with other you know with other synergies and so uh we'll talk about that because uh one of the new updates that we got may address some of the physical shortcomings that some classes have i mean in terms of meta and synergy uh physical classes are going to be getting some attention which is great because i play mostly physical classes so this is probably what they mean by cleanup uh, synergy types and compensation due to indirect nerf in damage because of this damage buff reduction and all of the other changes that balance changes and stuff. So my guess is just keep an eye out for the fact that they are indeed looking at the meta right now and the synergy. This right here, honestly, I don't know how big this is going to be. I don't really know what the heck this 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 could entail. Is this limiting some classes by nerfing them heavily by making their support weaker? Is other puff, uh, other classes shred gonna matter that much if you only get 30% damage buff? Uh, you know, from other effects. I think that's what that means. So I mean, uh, the synergy thing is it's gonna change the meta completely. It's just two, three. Th trying to sum up that up in three three tabs is gonna drive me nuts here because <laughs> I want more information. Right? I can't give it to you guys because it's not here. I can only tell you what has written down there. Now this right here, huge. Oh my God, this is so big for everyone, everybody involved. And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in just to show you guys. So swapping is getting completely changed. And I've read this over very carefully multiple times to kind of explain how the swapping is going to work. So first and foremost, guys, swapping is only you're only all classes are only going to have one buff skill to swap. Uh, but it won't apply to Crusaders and stuff, uh, who are all completely support, like uh, Crusader, but uh, almost all classes will have support, uh, one buff swap. Now, that, I don't know if that means that if you don't have a swap at all, you're going to get one. Like Battle Mage, for instance, still does not have a swap at all. Um, are they going to get one? I doubt it, but, you know, if you have one, you're only going to have one. So right now, I think Demon Slayers have multiple swaps. I think, uh, like... Uh, FNN has a couple swaps, Kai and uh, Stimulating. You're only going to get one. So I don't know how they're going to do it. They're probably going to merge the effects of one passive or one buff onto another. And then you only have to swap into that one. But either way, they're doing it for convenience sake. Uh, my guess is not to nerf you, but just for to make it more convenient. So you don't have to cast multiple buffs. Just cast the one and it's going to have the same effects. That's what I'm guessing. Here is the key though. I've complained a lot about swapping. Uh, I've suggested many times to implement the system of one button swaps. Basically, in effect, that would mean I press one button, it swaps out my entire gear set. They've come up with even one better. Okay, let me explain this. Special swapping designated slots will be added. What that means to me is, alongside the 10 gear slots that you have normally, there will be yet another tab that is just for swapping. Okay, because it says right here, you no longer need to buff swap in dungeons. Instead, you will register, not equipped, the swap gears for the buff. Like I said, it's going to be, it's almost certainly going to be another tab in your gear where you put all your swap gear into and you register it so that it, when you cast that one buff skill, because again, all classes will only have the one, when you cast that one buff skill, it will always take in effect all of the skill, uh, the gear that you have on your swap gears uh, tab or what you've registered as a swap gear and that's my guess of what they're going to do in effect it means that you wear both sets at the same time and when you cast this buff it only takes account as to what your swap set is you wear them both at the same time so that it, in, in effect you won't need to swap at all that is such a good idea and i love reading this that is just the greatest way to solve it because then you don't have to worry about pressing any buttons to swap anymore you just are always retaining the effects of the swap i can see some potential problems still because uh swap skills are not the only things that you snapshot some classes may want to snapshot for instance uh stat swapping okay like for instance if you're if you're stacking hella strength or something and you swap out of a gear constantly to get that strength benefit 
then you will have some limitations if something is registered in the same slot. I'm not sure how it's going to work exactly, but uh, the skill swapping is not the only kind of swapping you could do in this game. You could do some stat swapping, in which case it's going to conflict with this. Because, uh, you know, this is designed to be worn all the time as its own slot, designated slot. And if you want to switch out, like, say, you have a strength uh, necklace or something and you're using the necklace as a swap set, I, I don't know how that works. You can't do it, really, because you, this is going to take precedence. Those are minor issues, honestly. My guess is it's not going to be that big a deal. It's just going to be very convenient, uh, my guess is. So I just hope I, I brought this uh, to the attention. I was like, I just hope they do it right and they remember that swaps encompass all gear. Okay, it swaps encompass all 10 pieces of your uh, normal gear. Your title, your avatar top and bottom have emblem slots in them. Your aura could have, if you have a unique aura, it could have an emblem slot there. Your pet uh, could also be a swap piece. So they need to incorporate all of that in one registry. And I hope they don't forget any of that, because otherwise uh, you're still going to have to do, you may not have to do a full 10 swap, but you might have to do maybe 3 or 4 swap, which is, you know, not as bad, but they could address this all at one time. I just hope that they remember about the titles, about the the avatar top, bottom, the auras, the pets, and they register those too, because I would love to not switch between tabs to try to get all my swaps. It's kind of the annoying thing about the game, and hopefully, you know, this addresses that, but it still could be an issue. Finally, swap gears are going to be reworked, obviously, to coincide with this point of there only being one buff skill to swap, so... I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be very, very great, and it was a better idea than what I had. I was like, yo, I just wanted one button swaps. They're just going to do no swaps. No need to swap, and it's totally possible. I can see them doing that, so I'm really hyped for that. Moving on, guys. So, okay. There has been so many iterations of Anton Raid, right? We have Anton Normals. We have Heroic Anton, and then we have the real Anton 20-man Raid. They're going to make another mode called Anton Raid Single Mode. It's going to be, uh, you can only enter it on raid days. But if you do the single mode, you're not allowed to do the 20-man normal mode. You will only get equipable savior, uh, savior weapons when you do this. Uh, and you'll, of course, get all the same rewards that you normally would during normal Anton. Uh, Avarice, uh, Condensed Antonium, all that. Actually, I'm not sure if you will get the same because it says here that you don't get any of the normal epics that you get. Uh, here, Yeah, the rewards are much more specific normal raid there are two phases where two points where you could get rewards here is just saying you only get your equipable savior weapon you could get avarice and eternal glory and uh anton soul equipment and all that so these are like phase two rewards that you get right here except this part right here is massive where you only get equipable saviors it says equipable so just uh, like it kind of sucks for some classes right if you have only one weapon type you can naturally use uh, you naturally want to use you you might get something else that if you can equip it you might get it so this is a big benefit but the thing is you lose out on being able to do normal raids so you know this could impact normal guild raids and statics because if you're strong enough to do normal anton and you don't have anton or sorry not normal uh raid and you can do it solo uh, then you might be dropping out of statics to do this solo and try to get the savior that you can actually put on uh, I don't know how hard this is going to be. It's got to be crazy hard if it's Anton Raid single ho single mode. But uh, I've heard some stories that some people are able to clear it with just 90 uh, legendaries and a good weapon. So uh, I'm not sure really uh, how this is going to affect it. And I don't know which one's worth it more. Because I think that Anton Raid normal, you know, the 20-man raid, is very useful for getting up a large amount of DIs and stuff. So who knows what that's going to be like. Uh, but speaking about normal and heroic Anton, though, they're going to be merging them into one. Uh, one difficulty and uh, basically merging the rewards as well. You're going to get condensed Antonium, all the stuff. GP pieces is going to be dropping, gigantic presence pieces, Anton cards, hell invites, and, and challenges. So they're like giving you better prizes. Kind of more akin to what you get in normal raid. Uh, of course, you get Antonium all the time. And then uh, you could get gigantic presence, Anton legendaries, Anton soul, all this stuff. They did not say anything about reducing the cost of gigantic presence pieces which i think they should have done a long time ago because this grind takes forever you have to farm a lot of freaking antonium and stuff to get and purchase a gigantic presence piece it just doesn't seem worth it at this point with how 90 epics works but anyway 
Uh, you still could get a lot of, I think this is the primary way of getting Anton legendaries is by doing both of these Anton legendaries and stuff because Raid doesn't give you that anymore. So uh, it gives you other stuff. But Paladin and Dragon Eye Second Awakening, I guess it kind of it kind of ruined what I skipped early at the start of this video, but we will be talking about that in a second, guys. I got a follower while I was doing this? What the hell? Anyway, guys, before we talk about this, we will talk about this. I'm, I'm skipping over it on purpose because I want to end the video on it. First, we got to look about uh, one of the things they kind of revealed at uh, at the start of the kind of stream, which, by the way, the video we were looking at is a two-hour long, uh, two-part stream. It lasted for like two and a half hours, and they kind of went over all kinds of stuff. So, yes, the Dragonite and, uh, sorry, the Dark Lancer and the Dragonian Lancer were classes that were teased, okay? In the winter update, we were teased a little bit about them planning on Paladin and Dragonite, and in the summer update, they've done much the same, okay? We've got Dark Lancer and Dragonian Lancer, and you can see this is their concept art. I gotta say right now, this guy looks like a complete asshole. Seriously. He looks like the dumbest guy I've ever seen. Like, how edgy can you possibly be? It's like Dark Knight and Lancer had a kid or something, man. Oh, he looks so stupid. His concept looks so stupid, right? He's going to be a magic-based class, and he's called Berserker Lancer that has dark lan dark energy. Shut up. Uh, he uses javelins to throw, which this is a key point because uh, javelin's not a weapon in the game right now. And uh, the, the memes were already big about deleting Lancer because of the fact that they increased the, the, the epic pool with shit items that they don't nobody wants because Lancer's dead. And here's javelins. So yeah, we have yet another lance type weapon okay that is going to be added into the game that's going to increase the pool even larger and then it's at the service of this fuckhead seriously i wouldn't even look there's nothing exciting about this guy he looks like a stupid idiot okay so hopefully they change the concept art because seriously i don't even want to play that guy but this guy on the other hand this motherfucker looks awesome okay this is straight up kane out of uh, Final Fantasy 4. Look at him. Even the armor has looks awesome. Surprisingly, he's going to be a magic-based class, which I guess is expected considering we have two magic-based, uh, or sorry, physical-based lancers already. So this guy's going to be magic. So stupid. But this guy's going to be magic as well, I guess. This lance type, it doesn't exist in the game. It doesn't tell you exactly what, it's, what the lance type is going to be called, but uh, he gets a unique style of fighting to hunt down evil. But this lance doesn't exist in the game right now, so it's going to be a new lance type yet again. So we have javelins here and some kind of magic spear. I don't know. So two new weapon types are going to be added to the pool. So if you wanted to delete lancer before, well now you're really going to want to delete them because we get two new weapon types. And of course we're going to be seeing those all the time when we do hell mode. So I'm really excited for this guy just by looking at him. Look at how cool he looks. His armor, man, his The Awakened Ones costume is going to look so cool. Fuck, man. He's also rocking the chaos ears, you notice that? <laughs> anyway, stupid idiot, awesome, cool guy. So, we don't have anything else aside from these concept arps, but just know that uh, they may be coming uh, next summer, I guess? I guess next year for us, because we haven't even been revealed any like videos on them. We just got revealed the other two classes that I will talk about in a second, but we'll be seeing these maybe next year or something. <laughs> Don't get too hyped. All right, some last things to talk about, guys, is a lot of kind of aesthetic changes. They're not really big gameplay changes, but you are going to be uh, introduced to a new world, honestly. The, the game's going to get remade again. I know for a lot of us, when we started playing a couple years ago, we were used to, you know, Hendon Mir, West Coast, and all these uh, Elven Guard, and all these places that are memorable, and we're getting, we're getting it back. Return of Old Air Raid, guys. Scenario and Town Renewal. Um, I think it's going to be easier for me to show this. I'll go over this really quickly since it doesn't... It's not a big deal, but, you know, it's just additional content for the game. Especially, you know, I think this is the kind of stuff that if you're into the world building of MMOs or into the, you know, lore aspect, this is important for that. And they're doing a lot of things to affect that. So if you're into that, this is your section right here. For instance, our scenario and towns are going to get changed. Syria's gate has been changed. We have pictures of this right here. All nice pictures. New arts for NPCs. Mission system is basically going to condense our questing system. Uh, system quests and feat quests are going to be merged into one that is called mission quest. There are not a lot of system quests in the game, so honestly, it's not that big of a change. Daily quests are changed to mission quests, which I don't know how that's going to affect it, but 
Okay, and you'll get equipment and items to help level, which you already did anyway, so not a big deal. World map renewal, this obviously goes back with the fact of the return of old era. Uh, we got a story renewal, which are different things that, you know, a lot of different changes that are big, that are only represented in this one bullet. Like, for instance, tutorial changes. All base classes are going to have their own cinematic and comic introduction. That's a lot of effort. But then each awakening, which again, there are more than 50-something classes in this game. Each awakening is going to have its own story as well. Lore-wise, that is. New BGMs, always uh, hype about that. Giant bosses, Skaza, and Lotus added. I don't know what this means. I don't know if this means it's a new dungeon or if they're just updating the Skaza and Lotus fights. No, Lotus we've already fought before. Skaza we used to fight in old DFL, so my guess is we're going to be fighting Skaza. I mean, right now, I'll, the only time we fight Skaza is little baby Skaza and Timegate, so my guess is new dungeon, new region. Are we going to be able to get new stuff from it who knows so it's going to be probably be part of the scenario itself hopefully you know the the only thing they got to retain is lenny dying at lotus's hands i mean that was that needs to be maintained because lenny was useless man <laughs> and about five of you guys actually 50 of you guys probably just stop watching the video then uh drag dungeon has been strengthened um i guess is just by grinding they say the exp is better than you know it is right now. Uh, my guess is you'd still be doing scenario to level, honestly. Or maybe they mean how hard the dungeon is. I'm not sure. New dungeons planned at a later date. Cartel resistance. I think there's a cartel themed dungeon already coming in the works right now. I'm not sure about that. But you're going to have raid gimmicks here. Slow industrial complex. Select dungeon progress to take advantage. Somebody uh, made it the comparison to Mega Man. Maybe you get to select which route that you go. Uh, for each dungeon. It's not going to be a big deal, honestly. You're going to do all four of them anyway. So here we go, guys, the pictures. We got a new world map. I think this is the weirdest one. Like, why is the sea train as big as a, a continent here? Like, what the fuck? Anyway, uh, we can see, like, Bonhoeffen and uh, Ghent, whatever, Imperium region. This is it right there. Then we got like Sky Tower is back. It looks like that looks like a Felia Post over here. Uh, a lot of lot of memorable stuff right here. Here's the world map. Uh, here is a before and after series room. Here's what we got now. And then this is obviously going to be made a lot more uh, aesthetically pleasing right there. And some kind of tree. Here's the old. This is we don't have this region in the game anymore. But this is the old Elven Guard. Here it is updated, and we are going to get it back again. So I don't know how they're going to incorporate that in the story, but. My guess is we're getting rid of Silver Crown, guys. We're going back to the roots. Because I remember old DFO, guys. This is what we did. In fact, that beta. Remember in beta, we had this this dungeon, not Silver Crown. So it's going to be nice. It's going to be updated to this. Dungeons that are like the Ice Ridge right here are going to be back. And they're going to be... This is old Ice Ridge. And this is what it's going to look like now. Uh, here's what the Awakening kind of preview page is going to look like. And what skills you get. It's a little bit updated. Here, I think, is the uh, tutorial quest that... Or, I don't know if this is a tutorial or a awakening quest line, but it's going to be specific for each class, right? You're going to have a unique kind of story going on. Some new enemies in Bonhoeffen region, I guess, or this is actually a cartel, so, and Antwerp Canyon. So, yeah, there's a lot of new stuff gets getting added, guys, in terms of content and lore and convenience and world building and all that. So, I'm looking forward to that. Those are those are nice changes and honestly, I think Elven Guard was a much more relatable beginner zone than a place like Silver Crown, the wood zone. But anyway, guys, we've gotten to the end. That's this is among the last stuff that we are getting. I kind of skipped over the first stuff that we're getting because it is the stuff I want to talk about most. And I don't want to drag this on forever, but guys, night Knight is finally getting your last two subclasses. Before we do that, guys, let's go ahead and go into the preview video that they gave us for it. And that is, by the way, them cheering for that. One Punch Man? We finally got the knights, guys! Yes! Okay, guys, so... There you go, that's what we got for the for the new female priest, guys. Or, sorry, female knights. 
I've been waiting to talk about this all day right now. Now, for this segment, I'm kind of going to do an overview of what the classes are and just initial impressions. I think later on in the future, you know, this video is getting kind of long, I would want to do like a full recap of what my impressions are of the classes themselves um, by looking at the skills and analyzing them. But for right now, I'm not going to really give my opinion on them. I'm just going to tell you what they look like and how they look like they're gonna play. Now I want to make the point right now that I am not a big fan of what the costume looks like for the female uh, cru uh, I'm mixing all my classes up, my paladin class. I just want to also bring up uh, the old paladin class just to kind of show you guys what she used to look like. She kind of kept the same stance, this is a little big right now. She kind of kept the same stance and by the way we've known about this class since freaking Elven Knight and Chaos were like conceived you know, as a as a concept. These two concepts came out before too, so we've known about Paladin and Dragon Knight for a long time. This is the old concept art though, and then they went with this. I just gotta say, her face is really busted. I know, I like how they kept the same kind of pose and everything, but when they redrew it, her face just, they forgot to draw her face or something. That looks like a, like a, I don't know, like a ditto. It just, it doesn't fit. But anyway, I don't like the Paladin. Hopefully they redo it. This is concept art, as I heard, but I just really hope that they redo the concept art. Now, when you look at the Dragon Knight, by the way, Dragon Knight, I'll let you guys see right there from far away, and then they even made it huge. This is a huge picture because it's very high res, high quality. This looks more akin to what I'm expecting out of these classes. This looks way better. I'll show you guys a concept art of Dragon Knight from way back in the day. Don't have a very great picture, but this is the best I got. That is an upgrade. That looks a lot better or at least as good as the old one and hell it looks really good and high quality so hopefully by the time this class gets released for real it looks a little bit better but aside from how they look guys you know kind of ragged on this class enough because I feel like Paladin is gonna be an awesome class regardless of how that face looks uh, and Dragon Knight 2 for that matter so everybody's hype about it uh, later on in the in the video they actually showcase some of the gameplay with each of the classes so we'll go ahead and skip to that as well and I like it because you get the 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 you get their live reaction too so here you can kind of see she has a bludgeon type uh, she's using a bludgeon type weapon that's what I'm guessing is her primary weapon she'll get buffs based on what weapon type she's using i believe if she has a bludgeon her skills will do more effects so she's one of the first classes in the game right now that actually gets benefits for wearing a bludgeon but of course like the other knight classes you can wear whatever weapon you want so she has no mastery but her buffs her skills get benefits if she wears a bludgeon now you can see what her theme is right now she's actually very anime-esque man that that those wings behind her character are actually giving her buffs and she gets uh, more wings based on what skills she uses and then she can expend those wings to make her skills stronger. Most of her skills are going to be shield based right there. You can see some of them kind of harken to Elven Knight what type of skills she has but she has some pretty good AoEs, good lasers from the skies, good AoE and knockdown too and of course her shield itself is actually probably the main gimmick right there. It makes you I'm not sure if it makes you invulnerable or everybody in there invulnerable or just high defense, but you can't touch this. This is the primary defense in this game. There's our awakening right there. It looks like Vanguard Strash on the Elven Knight upset way huge. It is a huge AoE and it sucks in enemies. And it's a slight hold as well. So the Paladin already looking pretty uh, formidable right there. I'm looking forward to Paladin. Uh, you know, we're going to go over, the, these classes, by the way, are already released in the test server, so we'll be going over what those classes look like in the test server, but of course we want to go over the Dragon Knight as well, so we'll go ahead and jump to that part of the stream as well. And here we go. You can see the Dragon uh, Knight ha is using a Katana type weapon, she's using Double Show you can her, her skills are not as pronounced and flashy as the other ones, but... They do seem to have some cool AoE. This is awesome right here. Look at this, guys. Look at that. She has a means of flying or gliding and have aerial movement in the air. Now, we'll look later, but she actually has a ton of skills of which she can cast from the air and land either on the ground or cast them just straight up in the air. And, of course, she has a dive down attack to get out of the air. But then look at this. And that is the crowd cheering right there. That is actually, she did a double Shoryuken and canceled it into a dragon riding skill in the air. Look at this. Oh my gosh. That dragon, by the way, has sick uh, AoE coverage and vortex effect. 
Has extreme speed. Dragon fight right there. Awesome. And goes into the first awakening, which is a big laser face. We've seen that a lot, but it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I at least the Koreans are pretty excited about the Dragon Knight and how uh, cool her moves are looking with that dragon gimmick. But uh, I really like the fact that she is gliding and flying in the air. It looked a lot more fluid than what you might get with a, a Spitfire, honestly. Because she has these wings, she kind of glides, and she has a lot of skills she can cast that can maneuver in the air. Which, again, like I said, this class has already been out in the test server, so we can expect to see this uh, kind of content. Now. I think for the rest of the video, guys, I mean, I'm not gonna, I could try to explain the classes, but I just kind of want to go over some videos of people playing it in the test server. Here's the Paladin doing an actual dungeon just to kind of showcase how it's going to look like when you actually get to playing it you'll notice that her shield is getting bigger dependent on the size of how many uh wings she has behind her character her main focus is being behind the shield so you're going to be using the shield defense a lot uh, when we actually get into the training mode you'll see that it is possible to dash in and out using by keeping the shield up all the time and the bludgeon is actually giving you a lot of AOE coverage, kind of like it does on the Weapon Master. You can kind of see she has big AOEs on her hits right there. Like, that right there covered the whole room, and it just seemed like a small hit. So, cover the whole room right there. There you can see her, exactly what I'm talking about. She's dashing forward and dashing back while keeping her frontal defense up. The Elven Knight can do this, by the way, but only with the front slide, and she can't slide backwards. And it's much slower than that, so just throwing that out there, that... Her shield gameplay is going to be a main thing right there. Could a pretty good burst right there with that move. Big slam right here. Kind of chained right into that. That's a that's a natural chain right there. She has a different uh, X string than normal. Kind of doing like this four hit combo. She's actually using the weapon unlike Elden Knight. Oh my god. A lot of skills I'm noticing that come down from the sky and kind of do a big AOE. And I like that. Right now, just having trouble against this guy has, I don't know, defense or something. What I'm not seeing is a humongous burst skill. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of big AoE coverage. I'm seeing some okay burst skills, like, you know, the the hammer that comes from the sky, you know, the way you jump in the air or something. That's a pretty good burst move, but I'm seeing she's doing pretty good at grouping enemies down, but finishing them off with a big move, I have yet to see, like, a massive move. I'm looking for the move that's going to be doing the damage caps, you know. That seems like a pretty good trash clearing mod right there. Trash mob killing move right there. Okay, here we go against the boss fight. And here's the awakening. It's a hold, by the way. It's a pretty short one. You can actually hold it down like you can on the female striker and just kind of use it as a suction because it does suck in all enemies. Man, this is one class that's probably not going to ever get knocked down, huh? Because she has her shield up all the time. You see that? Guarded against the front attack and just constantly she, she can hold her her guard up and constantly interweave skills into it you know it's kind of crazy now what what i don't see is a super armor buff so my guess is elven knight probably seems to have more super armor than this class so you're gonna have to work around that shield to ensure you don't constantly get knocked down and hit and stuff so she may be like maybe the most tankiest in the game but she doesn't have the super armor my guess is she's gonna keep getting knocked down from what i see that's why you got to keep the shield up and just keep the shield up and keep casting buffs and or casting your uh, skills to keep your offense going. Gonna have one more PVE video. I have to show this guy might. It's a different guy, so he might be a little bit more powerful to showcase what this class has. But that AOE, bam! Look at that that two hit right there. That was nice. I like her skills already, man. I like her skill. Just looking at the skills, I really like them. That is awesome. Going going to farm some hell modes already, man. Look at him. He's already into hell mode. That right there looked like a huge burst. Very flashy skills, I gotta say. It's, it's much more flashy than other classes. I mean, right off the bat, that the wings in itself are already hella flashy, man. Right there, we're doing some old hell modes, man. I don't know when's the last time I've done some Cast of the Dead hell modes, but here you go. Small little launch skill is actually enough to kill that thing, so. Oh, that's a huge move right there. Nice. A jump forward. It's like Harbinger of Life on the uh, EK. 
That right there seems like Lion's Roar, which by the way, uh, I have been told that this class is going to be much akin to a, f uh, a male, oh, sorry, a female, sorry, a physical version of the female Nen. That's what I meant to say. Physical version of the female Nen. So, very exciting stuff right there. I'm looking forward to that. Here's like the Oda skill right there. Actually killing the boss, how long is this gonna take? This is where I feel like her shortcomings are gonna show is that she's gonna have some trouble like in the downtime of when her, uh, in the downtime of her skills being on cooldown. She seems like a skill heavy class and she doesn't have a very great X string like uh, female Nen does. So if she is compared to the female Nen, uh, female Nen has Tiger Flash, which is a great X string skill to wait while your skills are on cooldown. And this class doesn't seem to have that. It seems to be like a lot of downtime when your skills are on cooldown. So um, hopefully her support potential. This class is labeled as a support class, by the way. It was said support fighter class. Uh, so, and people have said that she's like a physical version of the female Nen because female Nen gives the magic buffs. So my guess is she's going to give some kind of buffs that buff up physical classes, but it's not very exact onto what those buffs are and how she's going to play uh, aside from that. Because Nen is strong in her own right. You know, that's the thing. So hopefully, you know, this class has that in spades. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to the Dragonite. And I'll try to give a recap of what this class is about too. This is a shield throw, which none of the other knights have that surprisingly. Elven Knight kind of has one that where she bounces your shield, but it's kind of weird. Nice katana slash attack, man. That is, that is a... Uh, very big AOE. Here's just her gliding right there, and she uses it to kind of air dive, nose dive into uh, a big AOE explosion. So that's pretty nice. I want to see more of her gliding moves. There's extreme speed, man. Oh my gosh. That extreme speed is uh, big AOE coverage, obviously. Look at that air combo, though. You see that? She was just juggling him, then did like an air attack. I like that. That's very flashy. Here's a dragon. That was hype dragon. Uh, has huge suction in AoE actually. So if we go into training and you look at it, that can, that move can drag everybody in the room to any anywhere. Such a good AoE move right there, man. Huge damage too. Right there, I think this is what this class excels at. Actually, looking at her skills, she actually has a couple moves that act as a very long hold, which Elven Knight has some holds. It didn't look like the Paladin, by the way, had any holds as far as that. The, her first awakening was like a split second. But this class, the Dragonite, had like a serious hold. Like this right there was a long hold. Went in here and was able to hold them for a long time. Look at that. And I think she has another move aside from that too, so something that's pretty abusable. Using her uppercut, she got some super armor. She's getting a lot of super armor on her moves, by the way, which did a whole lot more damage. Oh my god. Oh yeah, she's getting a lot of super armor on her moves. Right here, we're going uh, going back to the Paladin for a little bit. We got like a maybe a short recap of what her skills are like. Here's her ducking back and forth. and. Some of the skills we've already seen, all of them, uh, pretty much in Dungeon. We don't know exactly all of them and their specifics. My guess is I might make another video if I actually care about that. But it's so far down the line, guys, that this is kind of how she plays, and I'm really excited about that. There's the big suction, man. Look at look at the range of the suction, by the way. He's going to do it again. Covers the whole freaking map, man. This is bigger than the key hop kick on. Look at that. That was way the hell over there. Good move. Anyway, these are 19 minute long videos, guys. I'm going to leave these in the comments below because I think you probably uh, are going to look at it with a fine tooth comb, whereas this guy kind of goes into detail on every single skill. Some of them are pretty nice. You know, obviously, he's using some skills in the air and on the ground, which have different uses. You can see while she's jumping in the air, you can see what skills she has active, and a lot of them are active. She can cast any of these skills in the air, which kind of goes along with this gameplay that she can glide. She can glide, so she can obviously get skills, access to skills in the air, which I really like. I think uh, if you're going to do it this way, you got to do it right, and I think Spitfire doesn't do it right. This class seems like she's going to be able to manage. Have different. When you cast them in the air and cast them on the ground, by the way, they, they do act differently. They do different things. Some of them will do dive attacks back onto the ground, or some of them, you know, are just different. So, just throwing that out there. Go check out these uh, in the description below, guys. I'm tired of talking, honestly. 
Lastly, guys, we have the same thing, but for the Paladin, I'll put this into the description as well. But uh, same thing, Paladin, you know, all the skills gone through, what type of skills you have, what kind of slams you got, and they all look pretty awesome. So, again, check the description below, guys. I think I'm done for tonight. Uh, there is the epic crafting system, but I think I'm done for tonight, guys. I've talked uh, for like two hours, the most I've ever talked about one of these, and there's a lot of stuff, mainly, okay, recapping, we got the new knights we've got 90 epic crafting we got 90 legendaries are made easier we got balance patches across the board we've got anton dungeon uh anton raid solo we've got uh merged and normal and heroic anton we've got teasers for the new lancer classes and we've gotten a brand new air ad guys that's what we've gotten too long uh didn't read go ahead and uh go check out the details in the table of contents below but guys that's it did we get any morgan freemans today nope we got this black guy here no Morgan Freemans today, guys, but that's a shame. I expected to see some Morgan Freemans, but anyway, guys, <laughs> thanks for watching. There was a recap again. Shout out to DJ. And uh, here's hoping for Paladin and Dragonite coming here uh, in about six or seven months if uh, everything goes according to plan. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I will catch you nights. Later.